Welcome students to our third video section on vermiculture and compositing and in this section we will be discussing on the topic the different species of opium which is used in vermiculture. So these are the certain terms uh, which is used in the vermiculture or the vermitech technology. So first of all what do you mean by vermiculture? It is purely the culture of worms. So vermiculture it is the culture of worms and the vermicomposting it is the using of this worm for the composting the organic materials and what do you mean by vermicompost that is a product that which we obtained from a vermicomposting process is called as a vermicompost and the vermicast it is an excreta of the worms are called as a vermicast and the person who does this vermiculturing is called as a vermiculturist and as you all know that these earthworms belong to the phylum annelid and these are the certain terms that are uh, terminologies that I used which is concerned with the earthworm the prostomium that is a anterior projection of the first segment of earthworm so this is the body of the earthworm and this earthworm is divided into numerous meta, uh, metamers numerous segments called as a metamers and the first segment is called as a post, uh, peristomium and the anterior projection of that peristomium is called as a prostomium and throughout the body you can see a circular rings they are called as a annulae and a tegidium is called as a last segment of the earthworm and the clitellum it is a reproductive structure this is a clitellum and uh, which is a reproductive structure of earthworm so these are the some of the common terms that we have discussed about the morphology of earthworm and now uh, as you all know that from ancient time onwards uh, earthworms is regarded as a uh, farmer's friends and because it improves the quality of the soil and also they enhances the plant growth the role of the earthworm is uh, um, the sorry the earthworm has its own role to uh, cheer out or uh, to drill out the soil drill out the soil and they are also called as the intestine of earth and uh, proper maintenance of this uh, soil and the maintenance of the soil uh, is made possible with the help of this vermicompost and there are the certain earthworms which are used for vermicomposting processes and in order for to use these earthworms in the vermicomposting process it should possess certain features so let's see what are they that is it has it should has have, have natural ability to colonize it, have, it should have the high rate of uh, litter consumption and digestion and assimilation of organic matter. The third, it should have the wide range of tolerance to the environmental factors, short life cycles, the high reproductive rate and endurance and tolerance of handling. So these are the uh, criterions which should be possessed by the earthworm. It, it has to be used for the composting purpose. And um, which earthworm can be used and there are about the 6,000 uh, 6, species of earthworm ranging in size from half an inch to 22 feet long and the seven species have been identified and it has been used for the composting process then uh, the most important one is Istina fultida it is largely used throughout the world and let's see which are the different types of earthworms the earthworms as we have said that earthworms improves the quality of the soil as it recycles the waste of different life forms into humus and based upon the feeding and the burrowing habitats there are the four types of earthworms are cultivated in vermiculture they are the endogenic epigenic anisic and compost form the endogenic form in the sense that these earthworms are characterized by the burrowing and they usually create the horizontal burrow and they feed on the material present in the deep surface soil. 
surface of the soil and the epigenic these earthworms are found in the upper surface of the soil and they feed on the soil uh, filter uh, then they are not uh, for the burrowing and they are usually red brown and the red brown in color and they are the small in size and do not contain uh, stripes unlike that of the other earthworms and the third variety it is a uh, anisic forms and they create the vertical burrow and they feed on the soil litter they are found in the upper part of the soil and in the deep soil burrows in grassland castings of these earthworms can be found and the fourth one it is a compost form as the name suggests these earthworms are found in the compost pits and this type of earthworms dwell in the warm environmental conditions in the presence of moisture and in a readily available composite material so these are the three uh, these are the four different types of earthworms or types of earthworms that uh, are present and uh, uh, there are the commonly varieties of earthworms such as Astina foetida Eudrilus eugenae and Perionics excavators these are the three common species of earthworms and this is a picture of Eudrilus eugenae it is also called as a night african night scrawler african night scrawler Eudrilus eugenia and uh, they are called as African night, scroll, uh, night crawler. They are the native of uh, Africa and it has been extensively used in United States, Canada and, uh, and the many other countries for vermicomposting purpose, purposes. And it, uh, it is a large earthworm and it grows up to a length of 5 to about uh, 5 to 7 millimeter in diameter millimeter in diameter and consists of about 250 to 300 segments and they weigh weighs around uh, 5600 milligram and the worm has a convex dorsal surface and a pale white flattened ventral side it has a uniform purple or a gray she uh, gray sheen dorsally and the posterior segments are very tapered posterior segments are very uh, tapered when compared to the other segments the clitellum region is pale in color than the other regions and the main disadvantage of the this uh, earthworm is that uh, it uh, it has only uh, slight tolerance and sensitivity uh, of handling it has a high reproduction rates and are capable of decomposing large quantities of organic waste quickly and incorporating them into the topsoil uh, the life cycle of uterus eugenia ranges from uh, about 50 50 to 70 days 50 to 70 days then the optimum uh, percentage of moisture that requires a, they can tolerate uh, the moisture between 70 to 85 percentage and the lifespan is about one to three years so that's all about the african night scholars then about the red wingler that is istrina Feetida. They are commonly called as a tiger worms, also the manure worms and brandling worm. The color it is rust brown with the yellow stripes stripes around its body. You can see the yellow stripes around its body. It's less, just like a tiger and it can reach up to a length of 130 millimeter. And the idle temperature that uh, range that can tolerate is about 15 to 25 degrees Celsius. Then uh, this is seen of uh, fetida worms are the useful in composting of both domestic and the industrial organic waste they are the native of europe and uh, but they have been introduced to every other continent except antarctica and the worms uh, they are the used for 
when the combusting process and they are roughly hand they can be roughly hand handled so they are widely used for the combusting purposes the specific name fulgida means uh, the foul smelling which indicates that the anti predator adaptation okay that's all about the red wing plus then the next uh, example it is a lumbricus robulus lumbricus lumbricus because uh, it is an acinic form is an example for the acinic earthworm and it is found in the moist soil they are also called as a red worm or the blood worm or the red winklers the color is dark red to maroon and uh, no stripes are seen and light yellow underneath so it's a picture of a lumbricus rubellus and it can reaches up to a length of about 105 Millimeter, and uh, the ideal temperature ranges 18 to 23 degrees Celsius. And usually, it has a deep purple, reddish brown color dorsally and a pale yellow color on the ventral side. And uh, so, it's very common species in Asia, and it's usually used in vermiculture in India, Philippines, and Australia. So this is a picture of uh, the other uh, worms. It's a blue worm, Periolus excavatus. Then there is a Isenia hortensis, that is a European egg scholar. This is a red winged worm, Isenia foetida, foetida or foetida. Then these are the other suitable species. Uh, Periolus excavatus, Eutrinus eugenia, Isenia hortensis. Then Eusebia pitida. So these are the few other species of earthworm. Okay, so this is a picture diagram showing the ecology of earthworm. It exists in the three ecological categories, that is either epigenic form or endogenic form or anisic form. then epigenic form it is they live close to the soil surface and they feed on the plant litter so you can see here they feed on the plant litter and anisic they feed on the plant litter and the soil that forms a vertical furrows so this is the anisic and there are the endogenic forms that lives in the various depth in the mineral soil horizons and they feed on the soil so these are the three different categories of earthworm and usually the surface feeders are used for the vermicomposting purposes